All right, we are finishing up our inequalities lesson with two-step inequalities. So as we get started, you may notice that there are some similarities between this and the last one that we did, uh, namely the first couple fill-ins here. So if you remember, inequalities can be solved by following the same steps as equations. So if you remember, we said the variable must be alone or isolated on one side of the inequality. Now this is really key, right? We're looking for that variable to be alone. So we isolate the variable by using inverse or opposite operations. In other words, if we see addition, then we're going to subtract. If we see multiplication, we're going to divide. And remember, whatever you do to one side, you must also do to the other. Oh, my pen's messing up, come on. Close enough. Uh, when you multiply or divide by a negative, and this one is key, we need to remember this, divide by a negative, um, the inequality sign is then flipped. Sorry, I'm trying to fix this one over here. There we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve one of these. 10 plus 3K is less than or equal to 22. What do you think we do first? Remember, our goal is to get the variable by itself. So I need to move everything else away from the variable. That means I want to get rid of this 10. How do I get rid of the 10? Well, I can't just cancel it out. It has to go somewhere. So it's kind of like weightlifting, right? If I take 10 pounds off of one side, I take 10 pounds off the other. I want to get rid of this 10 pounds. So I'm going to subtract it. But I'm going to have to do it to both sides to keep this balanced. So now we're left with 3K is less than or equal to 12. And the last step, remember, I still want k by itself, but I have three of them. So how do I get rid of three of them? I just divide by three. So then what we end up with is k is less than or equal to four. Let's put four down there. And because it's less than or equal to, close circle. And we're going to the left. All right, number two. Let's change colors here. Uh, 19 is greater than negative 4 times p minus 5. So again, we said we're, our goal is to isolate the variable. So we want to isolate the variable p here. And how do we do that? We get rid of this negative 5. Remember, we're using inverse operations. So when I see subtract, I know I need to add. So let's go ahead and add 5 to both sides of my equation. Didn't mean to cross that out. We should get 24 is greater than a negative 4p. Now, please notice we said when you multiply or divide by a negative, are we multiplying or dividing by a negative? Yes, we are. So using inverse operations, if I want to get the variable by itself, I'm simply going to divide by negative 4. And again, by doing that, it flips my sign. So I get negative 6 is less than now, not greater than p. In other words, what we're saying is, open circle, right? P is greater than negative six. All right, let's move on here. We've got a few more problems to do. One half R plus three is less than six. Remember, our goal is to get the variable by itself. So the first thing we need to do is get rid of this three. How do we do that? We use inverse operations to undo addition. So. Let's go ahead and subtract. This cancels out. We're left with 1 half R is less than 3. And now here's the, the last part, which is tends to be tricky because a lot of us will try to find half of 3 as our answer, but that's not the answer we're looking for. Remember, because 1 half is in front of R, um, we need to divide by 1 half. I know that sounds crazy, but because one half is being multiplied by R, we're doing the opposite by dividing. Now, please remember one thing about dividing by a fraction, it's really the same as multiplying by its reciprocal, right? And the reason I can do that is because if I want to get rid of my denominator here, which I do, if I multiply by its reciprocal, where one times two is two, two times one is two, two divided by two is one, right? So really those cross out but we have to make sure we also multiply by the top. So it's really three times two over one, which is the same as three times two. So we have R is less than six. 
All right, number four. Negative 12 is less than or equal to negative 5w minus 32. Again, we want to isolate the variable. We do that by getting rid of the negative 32 by adding 32 to both sides. Okay, so negative 12 plus 32. Remember, these are opposite signs. So we are going to subtract them. So we should get 20 is less than or equal to negative 5w. And remember, we said when we get a negative um, in front of the variable, that means we're going to flip the sign, right? So negative 5 or divide by negative 5, we should get negative 4 is greater than, I almost put the wrong thing, greater than or equal to W. In other words, close circle, W is less than negative 4. All right, number 5. 2c plus 7.5 is greater than negative 1.5. So remember, we want to isolate our variable. We do that by getting rid of the 7.5. Let's go ahead and do the opposite here. Now, please be careful on this one because we already have a negative uh, be, and they're both negative. That means we are adding them together. So 1.5 and 7.5 is going to give us negative 9. And then our last step, remember, 2 is being multiplied by c, so let's go ahead and divide it by 2. So we're left with c is greater than negative 4.5. Please remember, we are dividing by a negative, but the coefficient, the number in front of the variable, was not a negative. So the sign doesn't change directions. It's only when the coefficient is, is a negative. So open circle and c is greater than. All right. Last one on this page. This one always throws students, and I'm not quite sure why. I like these more than this one because I can generally multiply in my head. So remember, we want the, the variable by itself. We're isolating this. So let's go ahead and subtract 7 from both sides of our inequality sign. Get rid of that. We're left with x over negative 4 is less than or equal to negative 4. All right, so remember. Uh, I know I said it's the coefficient, but if there's a, ver a number underneath the variable, in this case the denominator, and it's negative, well, because I'm multiplying this side by a negative I, and multiplying this side by a negative, I'm going to be flipping the sign as well, right? So x is not less than, but it's greater than or equal to, and negative 4 times negative 4 gives me 16. Close circle. X is greater than going to the right. All right. These are all for you to do as practice. So if you're watching this video, please make sure you attempt these. And then you can always ask me for questions if you get stuck. We're going to go ahead and move on to the very bottom of the page. Let's look at number seven. Rodney was asked to place a check mark next to any inequality for which X equals negative three makes the inequality true. So we're going to make this really simple. If I plug in negative 3 here, right? Let's, uh, if I plug in negative 3, let's see. 4 times negative 3 would give me negative 12. Let's see. If I added 11 to that, that would give me negative 1. So if we rewrote this, negative 5 is greater than or equal to negative 1. Is that true? No, it's not. So Rodney was actually wrong on this one. Negative 5 is not greater than negative 1, although I can understand why he put that. But when we're working with negatives, the bigger the negative number, the, the less the value. Did I say that right? The lesser? lesser? I don't know. Um, the value is going to be smaller, right? So this one is not correct. He did not get that right. What if we plug in negative 3 here? Well, let's see. Negative 3 over 2 plus 5 is less than or equal to 3.5. Would that be true? Well, negative 3 over 2 is the same as negative 1.5. Let's see. If we add that to 5, we would end up getting negative, or not negative, sorry, 3.5. Is 3.5 less than or equal to 3.5? Well, it's equal to. So yeah, he is, he is correct on this one. Hey, Rodney got one right. What about the last one? Uh, if we make this a negative 3, so then we'd have 14 minus 6. So 14 minus 6 gives us 8. Is 8 less than 9? 
Yeah, it is. So this one actually works as well. So question two and three work. Question one does not. So Rodney was incorrect on one and incorrect on the last one. Oh, well, it happens. All right, Mrs. Miles asked her students to identify which values from the set, negative eight, negative 4.5. I'm not going to read all these, but do you see what I mean? Um, let's go ahead and solve this inequality first. I think that would make this a lot easier. That way we know pretty quickly whether Xavier, Kaylee, or Liang um, got that right. I hope I said that name right. Um, so if we, if we solve this, negative 4x minus 25 is less than or equal to negative 9. Remember, our first step, we want to isolate the variable. So let's add 25 to get rid of it, right? Cross that out. Add 25 over here. So we're left with negative 4x is less than or equal to, uh, what is that, 16. Okay. Last step, I want, again, I still want my variable by itself. This negative 4 is attached to it. I'm going to divide by negative 4. That flips the sign, so uh, x is greater than or equal to negative 4. Okay, so what that means is it can include uh, negative 4. So we're going to have all of these numbers that will be included in our solution set. This is not 1, and this is not 1. So therefore, Xavier is wrong, right? Xavier did not get it right because he included those two numbers we just crossed out. Kaylee says 0 and 5 only. She means only the ones on this side. Well, that's not true because it does include all of these numbers as well. So sorry, Kaylee, you also got it wrong. Liang, though, notice she gives all the same numbers we got. Negative 4, negative 3, negative 2.5, 0 and 5 only. Now, we can, we're okay with the word only in this sense because it does point out that it includes only these from the values that were given. Um, but really, it should be any value that's greater than or equal to negative four. So we're going to say Liang is correct on this one. That does it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I will see you guys on the flip side.